and from Goodly Studios brought to you by Thomas Custom Gifts. Today I'm going to show you how to create a name cutout like this one that you see here where the name is actually engraved and then the shape is cut out around it. It's actually pretty simple so follow along. I am using Affinity Designer um, and it's version 1.8.2 and I'm on a MacBook Pro. So the first thing you need to do is type the name that you want. So this is actually for my niece Charlotte that I made this for. Um, and I used a font from Creative Fabrica, which I will link that down below. And it is called Perfect, let's see if I remember what it's called. Oh, maybe I don't remember what it's called. Well, I'll use this one, and then if I figure out what that's called, I'll I'll link that below because that's a cute font. I thought it was called Perfect Fairy Tale. I'm not seeing it. Okay, um, so you can put it to whatever size you want. It doesn't matter too much. But if you watched my other video, um, you'll know that we need to um, change this from text to a shape. So that the Glowforge user interface recognizes this as a shape. And then if we do that and take away the fill and just do a stroke line, just do a stroke line, you'll see that it has, you know, each of these is an individual um, letter. See? And they're overlapping. Um, and so if we put it into the Glowforge like this, it is going to show these little lines that insert. So to um, solve that problem, we're going to select all of the letters in the Layers panel, and we're going to hit Add up here. There we go. Now, depending on what font you use, sometimes it might fill in these holes. Um, and if I have time after this, I will show you what to do in that manner, or I might make another video about that. But for now, we'll focus just on this task. All right, so I'm actually going to fill this back in. Let's, aha, now I do get to show you, because look, look at what it did. Okay, so I am going to select this and select this layer and I'm going to click divide and it, you see it will in the layers plan, panel it will divide out these extra little shapes so we're going to make sure that the main part that we want is selected and we'll add that together and then we'll select all these little cutouts and click subtract and voila there you go there you have it, excuse me. <laughs> All right, so I've got my name. This is a cute font. I like this font. It's called Best Dreams. It's also from Creative Fabrica, so I will link it down below because it's pretty cute. So the next thing I need to do then is create an outline. So I'm going to go to Stroke. And I'm going to make it pink, just so I can see it easily. And I'm going to just adjust that stroke till it's like pretty solid. Like I don't want a bunch of little holes in there, because that gets annoying. But you can make it as thick as you want. I kind of like this because it looks like a little cloud. Um, but I'll just do... I'll just do like... Well, I'm going to do it pretty soft. I'm just going to do it like this. Okay, cool. But now, where is my word, right? So I'm going to select this and go to Layer. And click Expand Stroke. Now, it doesn't look like anything changed, and that's okay. 
if you look in the layers panel you'll see now that you've got this pink blob and you've got the word. See that? See the words in there? So basically what it's done now is it's made them two separate shapes. I can, well, theoretically, I can move this individually of this. Okay. So, to get this ready for the Glowforge, you can leave the name black because that tells it to engrave or, you know, we just want them different colors basically. I leave everything that I want to engrave black. It's just a code. Excuse me, my goodness, I've got the yawns. I have a baby, so I get a, I get a free pass on yawns. Okay. Um, all right, and then I'm going to take this background piece and I'm going to take out the fill and just make the stroke red. Again, this is just kind of, um, you know, anything that you're uploading to the Glowforge, any, you want to color code your different functions. So engrave should be one color, cut should be one color, score should be one color. Um, and if you use you know the same colors every time, whatever they may be, then it's just going to be easier for your brain to um, you know process to get it ready for the glowforge. Goodness, the yawning. Okay, um, and then it'll also be easier in the glowforge to get it right. Now you do want to check for little bits like this. If you get little bits like this, you can go into your node tool and select it and just delete it. Whoops, <laughs> deleted a little too much there. Uh, there we go, there we go. See now it's nice and clean. So you can kind of zoom in and check for little spots like that because that'll just be an unnecessary All right, here we go. So I'm going to just take this, select it all, do file, export. And a lot of people don't know this when they're first starting out, and I didn't know this when I was first starting out. You can use PDFs, um, vector PDFs, and they actually work better than SVGs and they keep their true size. At least that has been my experience. So I always save it um, without the background. I'm going to export it. I'm going to just call this Charlotte. Uh, and click save. I've also found that my Glowforge works better with Google Chrome than it does Safari. So if you're on a Mac, I highly recommend Google Chrome. So I'll go to app.glowforge.com. Now I do this and I hope that it's still recording. <laughs> um, here we go, here's Charlotte. And there we go. And you see here, it's got this as one function, and the outline is one function, and it's got the name as one function. So if I actually had my Glowforge turned on, I'd be able to say this is engrave, and this is cut, and then I would adjust my size if I hadn't already, and um, Then I press print, and that's all you do. All right, if you have any questions, uh, let me know in the comments below, and I will do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching.